We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. It's, it's harder when it's a perspective issue because, as I said earlier, the BIS and the FSB have, can only do things by consensus. Uh, you know, they, they don't, it's not a, they're not, you know, they don't have quite the same governance model of, as the IMF and the World Bank. Um, a reserve asset that's used in global trade and held by global central banks at a very modest 2% weight. You know, we haven't shut down entirely. We've, you know, spun down quite a lot, but we still have some, some things going on. And one of those things is a new version of Korea, so. Ripple Labs has been fined $700,000 by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network for violating the Bank Secrecy Act. According to the FinCEN press release, Ripple Labs failed to register as a money service business prior to selling its own digital currency, XRP. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stock. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transfer information for financial assets. Yeah. Entire crew is go. Enjoy the ride, pal. You got a baggie. Welcome to the party. Welcome back to some more. Moon o'clock news. No breakfast, no coffee. Just straight extra, extra. Bull listeners, shout out to latest sir. Uh, appreciate you stopping by, tuning in. Go ahead, throw on those moon suits, throw on those pilot shades. Buckle up, because the future's extra, extra bullish. Go ahead and throw that XRP in the bag. Let's go full speed, full throttle into the cryptoverse. We got the total global cryptocurrency market cap today at 2.46 trillion, up about 0.7% in the past 24. We got XRP okay. currently right around 5189. Stellar XLM right around 9 cents. BTC 69. Right underneath 70k E25 Hundo. We got Flare Networks right around 0 0.01. Axelar right around 70 cents. XDC right around 0 0.027. Songbird double zero six. Stronghold double oh three. We got Jewel Token right around 0 0.023. We got one from XRP Drops to pop things off. Ripples, Fiona Murray moderating a panel with R3, creating an interoperable infrastructure for digital assets. November 6th through the 8th, Singapore. We got one from Max Avery. The World Economic Forum 2024 report on digital asset regulation came out this month. I put together some highlights to discuss how global leaders are shaping the future of the digital assets. The industry needs regulation to thrive, so let's dig into the current status. World Economic Forum, October 2024 Insight Report, Digital Asset Regulation, Insights from Jurisdictional Approaches, TikTok, TikTok. We got Dr. Artur, as nicely spotted by BC Backer, we indeed see a huge uptick in XRPL trading volume. And this is amazing because it provides earning opportunities for liquidity providers and generally boosts activity. However, the market cap is still downtrending and we're yet to see a sign of reversal. What it means is that we do not see any fresh money from the outside and all of the volume is generated by the current participants. Once the market cap shows signs of the reversal, I will be able to call it the XRPL meme season. We got one from Subject Views. This reminded me of one digital asset buy said that he was once told that XRP was designed to prevent World War III. Um, but I want to ask you about sort of another important multilateral institution that we've referenced here today, the BIS and, and the FSB. Um, you know, what is your view on how effective uh, those institutions are and how fit for purpose those two institutions are in sort of meeting these modern global challenges? So I think both the BIS and the FSB have done a really good job when a problem has been identified that the G20 says this is a problem and we want you to fix it. And then they have the mandate to go forward and fix it, and they have a lot of support. So if the examples I used before, you know, the, convert, you know, the transition of LIBOR to, to, to secured overnight funding rate and other, uh, you know, repo rates in other countries, um, the central clearing of overuse to deliver derivatives. Uh, but it, it's, it's harder when it's a perspective issue because, as I said earlier, the BIS and the FSB have, can only do things by consensus. Uh, you know, they, they don't, it's not a, they're not, you know, they're, they don't have quite the same governance model of, as the IMF and the World Bank. And so it's harder to, get things done uh, in a perspective in a pers it's sort of like the it's the army of volunteers it's the army of the willing uh you know, a good example of this is what's happening in terms of cross-border payments uh the bis is basically saying 
who has an instant payment system that would like to knit your instant payment system together with other countries' instant payment? And the countries that put their hands up, the FBI says, let's go, and they, 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 and they take it forward. And they're hoping, they're hoping that that demonstration project, the Project Nexus, which is India, Thailand, uh, Singapore, a couple other countries, Malaysia, you know, they're hoping that if they can do that successfully, then that will encourage other people to come on board because they'll see the benefits of, of, of that action. But it, it's hard to do under the existing governance framework because it's all about consensus. Uh, and that's harder to achieve in peacetime than in wartime. We got Dr. Martin and SOA begins. U.S. government debt market collapse has started. This is a massive implication for the economy. So it begins. We got John D and John D in for Senate. The wealth gap has increased every year. Elizabeth Warren has been in office. Her solution, ban regular people from owning Bitcoin while the wealthy get to own it. Senator Warren's policy actually hold the poor and middle classes down. That's a fact, not an opinion. We got Justin, watcher guru Van Eck predicts Bitcoin will be worth three million and used as a global reserve asset by 2050. We have a model that assumes that by 2050, this is very long term, that Bitcoin becomes a reserve asset that's used in global trade and held by global central banks at a very modest 2% weight. And in that model, we arrive at a $3 million price target for Bitcoin. Now, that sounds you know extreme, but that's a 16% compound annual growth rate for a couple decades. You know, that that's not really that extreme. So into the millions over the medium term is a high conviction call. We got one from Nerdy X, Codius, lives on. The problem we ran into very quickly was, okay, so we have this very neutral smart contracts layer, you know, the smart contracts layer that's not tied to any particular blockchain. You could use it with any blockchain. You could use it across blockchains. You could use it across non-blockchain systems. But you kind of have to pay these hosts that are running the code for you. And... You could pay them with a credit card or something like that, but that seems very clunky. Like you're trying to pay a hundred different hosts with a hundred different credit card payments of 12 cents. Like that seems very inefficient. And so I think that was partly what prompted the need for the efficiency that, that intellectual brings to the table. So I think Codius has always been this sort of idea that everyone's still very interested in. It still seems like a very good idea, but it's taken a bit of a back seat compared to Interledger because Interledger seems like the thing that you need to enable it. Currently, there is a bit of work going on on Codius here at Coil. You know, we haven't shut down entirely. We've, you know, spun down quite a lot, but we still have some some things going on. And one of those things is a new version of Codius. So I don't want to say too much yet because it's obviously still very early days. Very exciting. Codius is what got me hooked on Interledger. Evan, any other project going on around Interledger early on that I don't know about? Is there anything else that you experiment with? I think one of the coolest parts about Interledger is that neutrality point, which is kind of what, what Stefan was mentioning is like why you need something like that for Cody's. He mentioned the, the efficiency. I think the other important point is the neutrality. Like you're not picking one blockchain, which, you know, then all the initial people that got in on that early get super rich and you're not picking like one company's technology, you're picking kind of a more neutral standard. And so um, like one of the toy experiments that, that I had done back in the really back in the day was like integrating it with torrenting with the idea that torrents are an efficient way of downloading media files and other and other types of files. But the two problems with it is you have both an unfairness about like the actual torrent network, but then also the content creators don't get paid, which is why it's historically been associated with piracy. And with something like Interledger, you... But, 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 nerdy. Cody is his dad. Told you so. Max Avery, Stefan Thomas, former Ripple CTO, announced he's working on a new version of Codius. This is huge for the XRP Ledger ecosystem. Codius is an open source hosting platform for smart contracts. It aims to revolutionize decentralized apps developments by providing a more flexible and scalable approach compared to traditional blockchain platforms. Decentralized hosting run programs on multiple hosts, creating a peer-to-peer -peer network for services. Built-in billing programs can pay for their own operation, language flexibility, write smart contracts in popular languages. What are the significance of the XRP Ledger off-chain smart contract execution? Codius can process contracts off Ledger, reducing the load to the XRP Ledger and maintaining high transaction speeds, cross-ledger compatibility, interact with multiple blockchains simultaneously. Check out Max Avery and check out the full list down below. Stefan Thomas is working on a new version of Codius. Speaking of Codius, Interledger XRP back in December of 
2020, we dropped a review of the Ripple X wallet plus the XRP use cases. We had the Interledger wallet here, Sandbox to test your ILP enabled apps with fake money. We had the Ripple X dev kit, XRP Ledger Explorer, XRP testnet wallet, charity payout, Ripple X launch pad here. We also have XRP Ledger tools. And they also talked about some of the use cases, the best way to move money around the world with XRP and the XRP Ledger, cross-border payments, micro payments, as well as digital wallets. And we had exchanges. We also had institutional trading market participants use XRP as a high speed, cost efficient and reliable trading collateral. This means seizing arbitrage opportunities, servicing margin calls and managing general trade and inventory in real time. Digital asset investor, May 11th, 2015. Based on this, if I were Brad Garland House, Chris and Larson or Ripple, I would assume XRP was a digital currency, virtual currency since the FinCEN US Treasury said it was and the US attorney confirmed it. Why is Ripple being sued by the SEC again? Ripple Labs has been fined $700,000 by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network for violating the Bank Secrecy Act. According to the FinCEN press release, Ripple Labs failed to register as a money service business prior to selling its own digital currency, XRP. Not only that, there's also suspicious money laundering activity noted on the statement of facts claiming Ripple Labs subsidiary XRP2 failed to fill out required forms prior to a roughly $250,000 transaction. U.S. Attorney Melinda Hagg says, quote, Ripple Labs Inc. and its wholly owned subsidiary both have acknowledged that digital currency providers have an obligation not only to refrain from illegal activity, but also to ensure they are not profiting by creating products that allow would-be criminals to avoid detection. We hope this sets an industry standard in the important new space of digital currency. This is the first civil enforcement action against a virtual currency exchange. First FinCEN, now the SEC. When will the clown show end? Clown World 2.0. This is all a show to keep you out of the greatest opportunity of multiple lifetimes. Chad Steingrabber, no tax on crypto, but only on tokens made in the USA. We want tokens made here at home, Trump. Which ones would those be? XRP. Know what you hold, know what's coming, and know why. They want you out. Looks like you're going to need some more of those. XRPs. We got Stellar here at Money 2020 in Las Vegas to talk stablecoins, payments, tokenization, and more. Come in and say hi. Money 2020, Stellar. Larry Fink, we believe tokenization is a technological transformation for financial assets. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a tokenization. But the most importantly thing, we can customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual, we would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stock. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. If, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is a identified and they could vote their own shares. We got some charts to close out. Mustache all coins as assumed. All coins have reclaimed the trend line from September 2024. Egg Crypto XRP versus BTC worst case scenario. $4, $8, $9. All right, XRP fam, let's talk about the possibilities. A BTC hits 100K, a solid 555% pump for XRP up to 0.00004431 against BTC would mirror the last cycle high. If we don't see this gain of 555%, it could signal another customized black swan event impacting XRP specifically. But even a 555% move to 0.0004431 could mean a big dollar gains for XRP holders. Let's break it down in dollars. $100,000 BTC. $4.43 XRP, 130K BTC, 576 XRP, 150K BTC, $6.64 XRP, 170K BTC, $7.53 XRP, 200K BTC, $8.86. Worst case scenario, XRP versus BTC and Dark Defender. When Bitcoin dominance is in the decline, XRP bull run starts. Same case in 2017, 2021. The story repeats itself, XRP run. In a nutshell, the best is still yet to come. Crawl walk. Then we rock it. The longer they take, the higher we climb. On that XRP. 
Richless. And don't forget XRP Unleashed premiere coming up. Fruitionproductions.com. Appreciate you stopping by tuning in for another one. Where are those bags beat when our regulations are molasses? Finally breaks open and XRP's true price is finally revealed. Bags, 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 glitches. Welcome to the party. This a moon party. Hey, this a moon party. Hey, welcome to the party. Don't play around here Moon suit on her, you get sprayed